Hello everyone, my name is Ian. You're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. The Yamaha Tenere 700 has received universal worldwide praise for being one of the best adventure bikes you can buy for the money. And I definitely think, as I've showed in my other videos, I think it's deserving of that praise. However, the motorcycle, as I've also pointed out, is far from perfect. And one of the common complaints from riders, including myself, is the suspension of the bike. So the question is, what's driving these complaints about the suspension, and what are some easy things you can do to address the suspension performance of the Tenere 700? So whether you're in the market for a Tenere 700 or you already own one, I highly suggest you stick around and watch this video because you're gonna learn a lot about the basics of motorcycle suspension and also what's wrong with the suspension on this bike and what are some easy things you can do to fix it. Now I know that suspension can be a confusing topic, so I'm gonna to try to keep this video as simple as possible and explain things and not use too much jargon. So the purpose of the suspension on a motorcycle is not just for rider comfort, as many people think, but its primary purpose is to keep the tires of the motorcycle in contact with the ground as you go over bumps and as the chassis reacts to the terrain, whether it's off-road or on-road. You wanna keep those tires in contact with the ground because that's what's maintaining your traction and control of the bike. Now, adventure bikes like the T7 here tend to have much longer travel suspension than a street bike would. The reason for that is that so they can absorb uh, the impacts of riding in off-road terrain. Now, there are two main factors you want to understand about motorcycle suspension. The first is going to be the springs, and the second is going to be the damping. So inside your suspension are metal coil springs, both in the rear shock, which you can actually visibly see on most motorcycles, but there's also metal coil springs inside the front forks of most motorcycles. Now, springs come in different spring rates, or essentially spring stiffnesses, meaning how much pressure or weight does it take to compress that spring? So as you can imagine, a heavier load or heavier motorcycle is gonna require a heavier or stiffer spring rate, and a lighter load is gonna require a lighter spring rate. Now this presents a huge challenge for motorcycle manufacturers because if you're trying to deliver a motorcycle, let's say this T7, uh, for worldwide delivery to all different markets with riders of different weights, different riding styles, some people carry luggage, some people don't, some people carry passengers and some people don't, how in the world can you deliver a spring rate for every motorcycle in the world that's gonna meet the demands of every rider? Well, the answer is obviously that you cannot. So you're in an impossible situation if you're a manufacturer trying to get that right. So they try to usually um, find a balance point. Now, what I found and what a lot of us have found is that for whatever reason, especially the Japanese manufacturers, they underspring their bikes. Now the second thing I mentioned is damping. So damping simply refers to how the suspension is going to control the action of the spring. So think of it this way. Um, if you just take a spring and push it up and down uh, without any other factors involved, that spring is gonna move very fast, right? When you release it, it's gonna pop back up. So if you didn't have the oil and the pressurized gas and nitrogen and the valving that most motorcycle suspensions use uh, to control and slow down the motion of that spring, if you didn't have that, what would happen is you'd have a very uncontrolled ride. When people talk about adjusting their suspension, oftentimes they're referring to adjusting the damping clickers. You've got compression and you've got rebound, and higher-end motorcycles like this T7 have fully adjustable suspension damping, which is great. So let's bring the discussion back to the T7, which is probably why you clicked on the video. So the way that Yamaha has delivered the T7 spring rates, they're using a 70 kilogram per millimeter rear spring and a 60 kilogram per millimeter front spring. Now, those spring rates, if you use the calculators that I'm providing below in the description, are suitable for a rider around 150 pounds without any luggage or gear. Now, that is simply unrealistic for the average rider, not just in the USA where I live, but I would say worldwide as well, because people are carrying gear, people are heavier than that, and people also carry luggage and camping gear and things like that. Now, why did Yamaha choose to spring the bike so incredibly lightly I don't know, that's a mystery, but that's what they did. Now you might be wondering, how much does this really matter? 
Well, it matters if you want to get the most performance out of the motorcycle that you can. This is not only a factor for off-road riders, but even a factor for riders who mostly ride on the street, and here's why. When the spring rates are too soft, here's what happens. The motorcycle, when you put your weight on the motorcycle and go for a ride, uh, the motorcycle sags down. We call it something called rider sag. Uh, so the suspension is compressing partway through the stroke before you even hit any bump or use the brakes. When the bike is undersprung, like this Yamaha Tenere 700, you end up with too much sag. Now that causes a few things. Uh, one, because the T7 uses a progressive rear suspension linkage, which essentially means that the further you go into the stroke, the harder the suspension is to resist bottoming. If you're already halfway through the travel before you hit a bump, you're already in that harsher part of the suspension stroke. So your suspension is harsher than it's designed to be. Uh, the other thing that the soft spring rates will cause is that the bike in the front when you use the brakes will dive a lot under braking and upset the chassis uh, for cornering on the street especially. The other thing that happens is that the rear sags so much and the rear shock is the worst offender on this bike. It's so vastly undersprung that you're sagged way down and that alters the steering geometry of the motorcycle because the rear sits like this um, and it, it doesn't steer properly. So what's the solution to the spring rates? Um, now first off it's very critical that you understand you have to address the spring rates before you worry about any of the other damping or any of the changing out any other components. So always get the right springs first, especially if you're on a budget, before you do anything else because that's going to be the most important. So it's pretty easy to change out the springs if you're mechanically inclined. I did it myself. You're going to need a spring compressor for the rear shock, which I'll put in the description below. Um, changing out the front fork springs is pretty easy. Uh, I like to change the oil when I do it, so I take the forks off, dump the oil, flush the oil out, put a new oil, and the springs. You can also do it without even taking the forks off the bike, but we're not going to go into the procedure here, but that's relatively easy to do. Now, the springs will set you back around $300 for the springs themselves for the whole bike, but that doesn't include installation, which could be quite a bit more than that, depending on uh, what your shop is going to charge. Now one last note when we're talking about the spring. So thankfully Yamaha chose to give us a hydraulic preload adjuster for the rear shock. Uh, what does that mean? Well, the hydraulic preload adjuster or HPA is simply a dial that allows you to preload the rear spring. The purpose of it is to compensate for additional weight that you might be carrying. So the goal of, of the preload adjuster and the way you wanna set this up is that you wanna spring the bike um, for when you're in your lightest configuration, like your normal riding configuration, let's just say you and your day pack for the day, you don't want to have hardly any preload on that rear spring because uh, the more you preload the spring, the stiffer the action is going to be. So you want to try to keep the bike uh, supple and with a smooth ride. So you want to have very little preload to start out. The purpose of the preload adjuster is so that when you do add your camping gear for a camping trip or you add a passenger, that you're able to crank up that preload to compensate for that additional weight. Uh, so uh, what a lot of riders find with a bike like this is that they're having to crank the preload all the way in just to ride uh, by themselves. And that's a sure sign that something is wrong with a suspension setup. You don't wanna be in that situation. So now that we've sorted out the issue with the springs, we can turn to the discussion about the suspension damping. So the bike does have adjustable compression and rebound damping front and rear. Now, here's how damping works. You have screw adjusters. If you turn the screw in, uh, you're adding damping or turning it counterclockwise. So that adds damping and basically slows down the suspension action. If you remove damping by turning the adjusters out or counterclockwise, you are speeding up the action of the suspension. Now, setting up suspension and tuning is a whole science of itself. There's whole books about it. So I'm not gonna go into all that here, but here's my main point. There's a couple things to keep in mind when you're uh, gonna adjust your damping. The first thing is that uh, once you've sprung the bike correctly, reset all of the uh, clickers, all of the screws to the factory adjustments that Yamaha lists in the manual because you want to give yourself a baseline to start out from. The second thing to know is that then you're going to have to start riding and experimenting. Um, now, when you change the settings, you have to remember, uh, number one, 
change only one thing at a time to control the experiment. Because if you change two different settings, you don't know what's causing the improvement or the uh, decline in the performance. So change one thing at a time. The other thing is that only change whatever that setting is, maybe at most two clicks at a time, because the clicks actually do make quite a big difference. So try to stay just two clicks at a time and then uh, experiment, see how it is, and then readjust after that. The damping quality of the T7 is pretty good for a bike at this price point and is going to be good enough for I would say 95 to 98% of riders. So assuming that you've sprung the bike correctly and you've adjusted your clickers and you've done a lot of experimentation and back and forth testing, if you're still not happy with the suspension at that point, maybe you're more, a more aggressive rider or carrying a lot of weight, then there's two options you can turn to to deal with the damping part of the suspension. Uh, number one, you can take your suspension into a specialty suspension shop and have them tune the damping. It's going to involve them going into the actual valving inside the suspension and making adjustments to make the bike ride smoother and better for how you like to ride. Um, that's my recommended choice because it's going to be more cost effective and you're keeping the stock components. The second choice, the more expensive option, and I think more difficult option maybe to figure out, is to go to an aftermarket component tree. So you can buy a fork cartridge kits, you can buy aftermarket rear shocks, uh, but buyer beware on that because just because it's super expensive doesn't mean it's going to be super great and frankly the stock components on this bike are pretty good and you can get a lot out of them so really do your homework and look at your other avenues before you start dropping thousands and thousands of dollars in aftermarket components so final thoughts on the Tenere 700 suspension um, off the showroom floor this bike is going to satisfy a lot of people however as i've shown in this video uh, by making some simple adjustments to the spring rates and tuning in your damping, you can really transform the handling of the bike. Uh, when I changed out my springs, it was a dramatic improvement. The ride was actually smoother, which is counterintuitive because you think a stiffer spring would make it stiffer, but it doesn't because it makes the suspension work better and stay higher in the stroke. I had better performance hitting big dips and big hits on the trail. I can ride faster, more aggressively, and it really unlocks the full potential that Yamaha has given us with this bike. For the way I ride, I see no reason to spend further money going into the damping and having those things uh, changed out or tuned. Um, I like it the way it is with the proper spring rates. I think it delivers a really good uh, on and off-road um, balance of handling and performance and ride quality. So I truly hope this video was useful for all of you out there. If it was, there's plenty of ways you can support Big Rock Moto and all those ways are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Please ride safe and we'll see you out there.